another common element in these proposals, and it may be explicitly in there as a separate section, or it may just be something that you add in, but you want to give some information about your organization. Essentially, they don't want to give money to just a person. They want to choose an organization because an organization is sufficient as a platform for, for developing these projects. So this organizational information may include the past experience or past success that your organization has had, uh, other colleagues who are present at your institution who can help you, and potentially a letter or some sort of expression of support from the director of the institution. Again, let's look at some, some examples. Uh, here is, here is one where the Biodiversity Institute focuses on the study of the life of the planet, 10.2 million specimens, 20 researchers, 55 graduate students, things like that. Those are very nice, supportive details. In the National Science Foundation proposal, you have, again, a very formal uh, statement, laboratories, computer facilities, office facilities. I'm just showing you a little piece of it here. Again, the very informal commons proposal, but basically I'm pointing out that we can do this. Okay, We have all the facilities for, for manipulating the imagery, um, and we have labs that are more than sufficient to, to make this project happen. Um, and then in the, in the MacArthur proposal, how the issue relates to your organization, that's a prompt that they propose. Okay. That's a prompt that, I'm going to start there, okay? That's a prompt that they provide, um, but we point out that we have successfully carried off major biodiversity assessment initiatives in all of these countries with this funding. Um, and so essentially this is, this is organization in terms of the project team. Uh, but the point is, this is a way of saying we're pretty sure we can, we can uh, do what we're promising to do in this proposal. Okay, then a very useful element, and again, it may be explicit as a section, or it may be integrated into your proposal narrative. But you really do need to show that this is something that you have some experience in. Why should the organization, the agency, send you some money if this is a new endeavor for you? So it's another way of showing your readiness to take on the project, demonstrating progress towards your goals, if this is your second try, then it's very important to show that you've made progress on the project since the first try. And for me, a big priority is make these uh, preliminary data visual, if it's at all possible. I'll give you some examples. Uh, this is from the JRS proposal. It was pretty hard to make that one visual. But I, I mentioned that I experimented in Kenya and Burundi with accessing uh, these, these teaching platforms uh, from in-country workstations. Uh, some of these, these platforms are difficult to use, and so uh, this is essentially a, a way of saying that we've tested the, the YouTube platform and found it to work quite well. And so you know, here's the prototype, and there's a web link where they can go and see the, the prototype. Here's one from the National Science Foundation proposal, where preliminary data, well, these team members were the people who led early trips to those sites. And so, essentially, we're able to show uh, our prior experience in this, this work. And then here's an, an analysis of land use change around one of the sites in Peru. And so we're able to show that we can do the the remote sensing part of the project. Here is preliminary data of a sort for the, the commons proposal. Uh, remember, this was rephotographing sites for old paintings. Here's the old painting done in about 1900. It's a valley in central Mexico. And here is the new photograph of exactly the same landscape. Obviously, we're going to do this much better, 
but this this preliminary uh, data statement makes the point that the early painter was almost photographic in his work. Just look at the outline of the mountains. So these are very important because they allow you to speak to concerns that the reviewers may have. Then finally, in the in the MacArthur proposal, again, uh, we go through some of our previous uh, experience. One of our graduate students working in the Philippines, uh, six years of investment. Notice that we're not only speaking just to general experience, but this is tailored to, in this case, the priority is conservation and sustainable development. This statement is very, very tailored to conservation experience and conservation background at my institution. So this was a very important, uh, essentially, customization of a statement of uh, how proud we are of this institution. Okay, last element is broader benefits. Nobody, I believe, nobody in the funding world wants to just give you money and see one published paper appear in the literature. Rather, the funding agency wants to see that small investment or big investment that they make turn into an even bigger benefit. So what else does the organization get for its investment? Many times it's not the real reason why you win or lose, but it can, it can tip the balance if maybe your proposal is on the fence between getting funded or not. And these extra benefits can make a lot of difference. So some, some common ideas are training students, public education, and assisting in kind of other aspects of, of public well-being. It might be health, education, cultural resources, conservation, what have you. But you need to think, okay, I'm doing this project. What other benefits are there that are certain to occur and that really look good and that the reader, the reviewer, will be happy about seeing those benefits included. So here are some examples. Here, for the JRS proposal, it was actually pretty easy because we're saying we're going to make teaching resources available worldwide. Uh, so that, that was a pretty simple one. In the National Science Foundation project, this was actually a very nice one because it had direct public health implications, even though it was a biodiversity proposal. Also, it will inform biodiversity conservation. It combines expertise across many uh, countries, cultures, and domains. It will develop new biological collections, and it will support undergraduate education and research. That was a big proposal, and so we had to give them a a long and detailed uh, description of all of these different uh, other benefits. For the, for the MacArthur proposal, uh, we focused quite a bit on training. We planned three levels of training as part of this project. And that was essentially one focused benefit that we were going to offer back. That not only would we do the research and gain the knowledge, but we'd also share the knowledge and share the techniques and share the frameworks for thinking quite broadly across the region. Okay, so those are those seven elements that I promised you at the outset. Different proposals will have additional elements. Uh, for example, commonly you'll see the request for a timeline, essentially when do you plan on getting each thing done? A data management statement, um, that can be as simple as I'm going to put my data in, in access databases, but I personally would prefer uh, some vision to sharing your data. And so essentially that data management statement ideally will turn into another benefit because you're saying not only are we going to accumulate this information, but we're also going to share this information. And then oftentimes you have to give various certifications and commitments. Maybe the director of the institute has to commit to uh, releasing your time for this project. Uh, many times there are institutional level uh, certifications, like 
uh, this is a not-for-profit organization or something like that. Don't miss those because they can be really critical. So, just some last details. Um, and many of these details you can refer to the, the separate set of classes that I've developed for the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum which focus on publications. It's the same idea. You really have to make this attractive. So when you're writing your proposal, um, remember a proposal is not going to be uh, published, so we don't need to worry about paying for color illustrations. But color is a two-edged sword. The big benefits are that color is visual, it's attractive, it's convincing, you can communicate more in a little figure. But always remember, there's another side to it. If the reviewer prints out the proposal on a black and white printer, he or she may not see the color at all. Or maybe even the reviewer is colorblind. So in that case, red and green may get confused and lost. So use color, but use it intelligently. And again, there's a whole uh, section on, on figures in the, in the publication class. Another critical element is proofreading and editing. Essentially, this proposal really has to be perfect. And you might think, well, it's not going to be published. Why should I get every detail perfect? And the simple answer is you're trying to convince somebody to give you a lot of money. So you really do need to put a lot of time and effort into reviewing and reviewing and editing your proposal so that it is clean. So, in summary, good luck. Um, I've given you some ideas about how to prepare a proposal for uh, funding, and I hope that you will put these ideas to good use in developing an effective proposal. Thanks a lot.